Hey everybody. Today we're writing our own functions in R. As your data science skills increase and you start working on larger and more complicated projects, you're going to start running into repetition. And by learning to write your own functions and do it well, you'll be able to relieve that burden and focus on the more interesting parts of your data science projects. In this vid, I'm going to be looking at the Penguins data set a little bit more. That's in the model data package. I've already loaded that up. And um, that's a good learning data set. It's got um, seven different variables, of which four are quantitative. And so um, I'm going to imagine a situation where I want to just keep the largest bill lengths and the largest bill depths and the largest flipper lengths. I'm not trying to filter the data set. I just want to know which bill lengths or whatever are above average. And so I'm going to write a function that will do that. And I can imagine then applying that function to each of these different columns. Now, Having to do something four times is something you could handle manually, but it's easy to imagine a situation where you might need to apply the same original function 50 times, 1,000 times, a million times. Doing it by hand just isn't, isn't a real option. So let's start with a basic uh, example, our first function. And uh, I'm going to call it keep top. When you're writing functions, you should try and give them descriptive names, but um, you also don't want to spend a week coming up with it. So you try and balance the cognitive load between those two things. Um, I'm going to use the left arrow to assign the thing that I'm going to write, the function I'm going to write, to keep top. And I'm going to let R know that literally this is going to be a function. And inside of the parentheses here, I have to say the name of the arguments, the argument or arguments that this function is going to need. Again, try and be descriptive. Um, I'm going to be passing this function a vector of values, so I'll just call it values. I try and avoid values. I try and avoid x because, um, you know, I'm going to forget what these things refer to. I'd like to have something descriptive so that uh, future Andrew knows what uh, past Andrew was talking about. So um, in this case, I want to subset the vector of values, and I'm going to do that by only keeping the values that are greater than the mean of the values. And I want to account for the fact that there may be NAs in this vector of values. For instance, in the Penguins data set, we have some NAs. So I'm going to add in an argument na.rm equals true, so that this mean will only be taking over the values that are actually um, in the data set. But then we'll filter the entire data set based on that, not the entire data set, the entire vector. I'm going to hit Command Enter to execute that. You do have to hit command enter on the outside of the function. If you try and do it inside, you tend to get an error because then it's only executing the one line. All right, so after I execute the, func the line eight, you'll see that I now have a function called keep top in my environment. You can literally see that down there. So in R, functions are just objects like anything else. And that's reflecting, reflected in the fact that we just used an assignment operator for it. And so you can do a lot of, I think, fairly intuitive things with functions just as a result of that. Let's, uh, let's actually use keep top. Let's uh, actually do what we said we were going to do with it. Let's take keep top of penguins dollar bill length mm. You can see we got a vector of length 177 out, which makes sense. The data set's 344 rows long. This vector is 344 rows long, so it makes sense we get something out of about the length that's one half of the input vector. Let's um, let's get a little more complicated. Let's build up our uh, our function building skills in a couple of other important ways. Let's add a second argument with a default value. So first, let's um, let's get the second argument in here, and then we'll come back and deal with the default value. I'm going to call this keep top spec for keep top special. It's also going to be a function. And in addition to passing it values, you should also pass it a cutoff. In other words, instead of just saying stop at the mean value for this value, for the values vector, stop where I say to stop, or rather start where I say to start. So the syntax inside is going to be somewhat similar. Keep the values that are greater but this time it's not going to be greater than the mean. It's going to be greater than the specified cutoff value. And so now if I do keep top spec of the val of um, the penguins vector that I was looking at before, penguins dollar bill length mm, I will also need to 
specify a cutoff value. So I can name that if I want. Let R know I'm specifically saying the cutoff value. Let's start with 45. So uh, here I got 167 values back. If I change that cutoff to a different value, say uh, 40, I get a different number of values back. Since the threshold was lower, I'm keeping the values that are bigger than that, I have more values back. Wonderful. So um, that's a slightly more flexible function now. But you might find yourself in a situation where that flexibility becomes onerous. It means more typing for the user. Maybe there's one value that just comes up the most often. So I'm going to rewrite keep top spec so that there's a default value of cutoff. And the syntax is just cutoff equals, and you say what number you want. So I'll set a cutoff value of 45 as the default. And um, now if I copy and paste this previous line of code, the exact same, I'll get the same output as before, exactly. The 40 has been used. But on the other hand, if I leave off the cutoff, I won't get an error. It'll just default and use cutoff equals 40. So um, this is reflecting the behavior that you have for built-in functions. And in fact, the behavior that you've already seen me use today, where in my mean function, I used na.rm equals true to override the default NA handling behavior false, which will allow NAs to propagate through the mean function. So you can control that behavior in your own functions. I want to talk a little bit about errors. Um, errors, let's say errors, and let's talk about warnings. And I'll mention about messages. So let me just start with an illustration. Let's do keep top. I'll go back to keep top of penguins. But this time, let's do penguins dollar species. So if you remember, keep top is computing a mean and then doing a subset um, on that basis. So it won't be surprising when keep top of this categorical variable throws this error message, I guess a warning message. So um, it's seeing that when we did our mean, things weren't working out, right? So it's helping us to figure out where that's going on. Also notice that the output is ugly. It's just a bunch of NAs, and that's not really what we would like here. It's just a, it's an ugly output with an ugly warning. So let's rewrite keep top to handle things like this a little bit better. And if you're writing functions that you're going to be using for a while or that you're going to be sharing with others, it's a good idea to think about sort of what could go wrong. What ways could users mess up with this function? Or, um, what ways could they have good intentions but uh, still break your function? So I'm copying and pasting my keep top function. But now, before I execute this values subset thing, I'm going to check to see if we actually have a numeric vector in, in, in as the input here. So if um, it's not numeric, so exclamation point is dot numeric values. So check to see if the values vector is numeric. And if it's not, then do the following. And um, I want to throw an error. And the syntax for that is stop. And then in the parentheses, you got to put the error message you want. So how about uh, input vector must be numeric. So let's execute that. And then I'll just rerun the keep top command that I did previously. And you'll see that um, we got this error message that we expected. Input vector must be numeric. Additionally, the function literally stopped evaluating. It hit the stop command. It never got to this part. That was the part that was giving us all these NAs before. Now, one behavior I'll point out here is that um, we get this error in under, keep underscore top, which can be helpful, but can sometimes be overly verbose for some purposes. That's one we can over, override um, by adding call dot equals false. In other words, when you do this, um, error call, don't, or when you have this error message, don't actually tell me what function through the error. So there's the, uh, the result there. Now, you should use that judiciously. Sometimes you want that more verbose thing so that you actually get more information about your error. But if your error messages are descriptive enough here, helpful enough to the user, a lot of times it this becomes a, the actual call of the function becomes a little redundant. So I, I often have this in, though not always. 
All right, um, so that's nice. The potential downside is that stop just fully breaks things. And so if a user has, you know, written a script or something that has this nested inside of other functions or, um, or something like that, then this is gonna throw off the entire pipeline. And so it might be useful if instead of a error, we just have a warning message and then just pass the original vector back to the user. So let's do that. I'm just going to copy and paste all of this. And uh, to get a warning instead of a, an error, you just literally change error or stop to warning. And this will do sort of exactly what I promised. It will, uh, well, it won't do exactly what I promised yet. It will um, change my keep top and to give this warning back. Um, oh, I see the problem. Okay, I can't do this in half measures. The, the problem that came up was that, yeah, it threw the warning message here like I asked, but that didn't stop the, uh, the execution. And so it went through the next step and then did this values thing, hit the mean of the values, and then that gave me the same sort of red text that I got before, along with all these NAs. So um, I was going to do this anyway, but I was thinking I would do it uh, after just doing the warning. But let's get it in here. Let's, let's fix this. What I'd like to have happen is uh, for R to stop at this point. Give me the warning, but then instead of um, going on to compute the values, just give me back the original vector, right? Remember the idea was if there's a data pipeline happening here, if there's a number of functions nested together, I would like the input vector to be given back to the user to prevent things from breaking for, from the entire cycle to be broken. So uh, the syntax we want here is return and I'm gonna do return values. So if you don't get a numeric vector, then give this warning and then give back the original vector. Uh, if not, just keep going and do this. Notice that in this call here and in my previous um, functions, there's no like explicit return. The way that functions in R work is that it's going to return the last expression that's evaluated. So you don't always need to explicitly say what's returned as long as it's the last expression evaluated in the entire call. If it evaluates an expression, then gets to the end of a function where you close up that brace, it's going to give back what was in that last call. Okay, so I think I've got this patched up now where my keep top function um, gives me the warning message I wanted. Input vector must be numeric and then also gave me back the original vector, just like I hoped. Um, I should also say, if a warning message is too extreme for you and you'd rather just have a message, you can replace warning with message here, and, um, and that'll take care of it. I think you also need to take out the call dot in that case. I want to show one more thing, um, and that is passing arguments to a function as a list. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just make a list of the different arguments I want in my function. So I'm going to be looking at my keep top spec, which needs a vector and a cutoff. So I'm going to make a list with my vector, in this case, penguins dollar bill length mm, and my cutoff. Let's say, let's make it 50. And so the idea is that, um, you know, Maybe you have a, uh, a situation where you're getting some user input, or maybe um, the cutoff is coming from a previously defined function in a, a list of call or in a bunch of different sequential calls. So um, you don't want to just specify the cutoff manually. You want it to come from some value that's stored somewhere else. And so what I'd like to be able to do now is to pass these two um, arguments, the values and the cutoff, to the keep top spec function. But if I do that directly, keep top spec of the args, this isn't going to work. So you can see list cannot be coerced to type double. What's going on here is it has taken args as a literal input. And so it has taken args, gone up to keep top spec, and used it as values and said, oh, wait, it's supposed to be quantitative. So this doesn't work. What we'd like to do is to somehow notify keep top spec that args is actually supposed to be unpacked as a list before the things in that list are actually used to evaluate it. And so the thing you need to know here is do.call. And um, 
you see that you need two things, what and args. So what is the name of the function? So keep top spec, no parentheses, and then the list of the arguments that are actually getting plugged in. So keep top spec comma args. And now if I do that, you see I get exactly the output that I was expecting. I get all of the values in the penguins dollar bill length mm vector that are greater than 50.